it's Chrissy again and today I have a book review for you and that book is Perfected by Kate Jarvik Birch and I've tried to say that name without looking at it I just can't do it I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars I rounded it up to 4 on Goodreads book takes place in a dystopian world, it's not that dystopian, but a future world in which they have made genetically perfect people to be companions. Basically, they're pets. They're human pets, and they're designed to be talented and beautiful, and it's an interesting premise. I was so excited about this book. It was such lost potential. That is the biggest problem with this book. The book itself isn't really that bad. It really isn't. The, 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 the themes and the messages are a little too blatant. They're not very delicately hidden or they're just like said. They're presented. They're not within the lines. They basically say it. And I like a little bit more behind the scenes. Obvious, but let me get there myself. Messages and themes. And... Honestly, I have, I have, I'm really good. I don't hate characters very much. I'm really usually very accepting of characters, particularly, I know a lot of people complain about teenage characters being stupid or silly or just do, making really bad decisions. I'm always like, they're teenagers. Of course they do. Great example, selection series. I love America. Everyone else is annoyed with her, but I forgive a lot of things with characters because I like the psychology behind a lot of it. I can totally accept an uneducated character. I can accept a character that makes poor decisions. I can accept a crazy character. I can accept an evil character. I love Sebastian from the Cassandra Clare books. I do. I even had a tiny bit of pity for Voldemort. Okay? I'm really accepting of characters. However, I have a sore spot. We're just plain stupid characters. I'm not talking about impulsive stupid. I'm talking about you sh if you know the definition of the word, you should know that's what they're talking about even though they don't say it. That makes very little sense. Read the book and I'm just sitting here like, okay, if you knew what that meant. I understood you maybe not getting what happened as you didn't even know what the word meant. But then later, she knows what the word meant and she didn't just stupid <laughs> stupid characters and it's not even just the main character now don't get me wrong the main character in this book Ella Ella is really sweet and gentle and I'm not saying she's a horrible character completely she's not she's just stupid <laughs> she just is and she's not the only one I kind of that's one one of the problem one of the problems I had with this book I can suspend my sense of disbelief that we as a society would stoop so low as to have human pets. I can suspend my sense of disbelief for that. But if our society is going to go there and they're going to say we have human pets and they're the perfect companions, they're going to recognize what a perfect companion may mean to various people. These perfect companions, if we were to stoop that low, would both know how to play with children and exactly what y'all are all thinking when I say a human pet. Particularly when only rich people, <clears throat> men, can afford said human pets. But they don't think that? They really, they're really, the society is so stupid that not everyone knows that's what's happening. Come on now! So... <laughs> I just, I just, I got frustrated. It had so much potential, and it missed the mark. It was, it wasn't what I wanted it to be. Now I don't want to discourage people from reading this book. I don't because it's not. I don't like to discourage people from reading books because what I like might not be what you like, and vice versa. This book. I, that's my sore spot, is stupid characters, ones who can't connect the dots. Other people don't like America because she's too impulsive and a little bit 
immature and sometimes selfish. I get that. I, I, that doesn't bother me. I can forgive that in a 17-year-old character. And I could forgive some stupidity in this girl who's been sheltered so much. But... So, I'm not saying don't read this book. Because it's not bad. It's not. I just wanted so much more out of it. So, I don't want to discourage you from reading this book. Because a lot of the flaws happen to be my my pet peeves, the things I don't care for. The the blatant, this is the message. Some people like that. Some people find it easier to forgive a stupid character. Some people have a easier time believing people could be that naive in the society. So I'm not saying don't read this book because it was not actively bad. The flaws were particularly unsettling or distracting to me, but they might not be to you. And the book wasn't bad. It, I finished it. I finished it. I could get through it and it's short and it is an interesting premise. I, I, I really liked The Handmaid's Tale and I can definitely see some parallels between this book and The Handmaid's Tale, though not as much as the premise makes it sound. The pacing is very similar. Um, which was one of the only things I disliked about The Handmaid's Tale. So, <laughs> yeah, you get my point there. Its flaws were the flaws that really bother me, but they weren't damning flaws. If you want to give it a shot, I would not discourage that. I did give it 3.5 out of 5 stars, or even felt capable of rounding it up to 4. So, perfected. Bye, Kate Jarvik Birch. That's all I have for y'all today. Bye!